Hello! <laughs> Another video about LEDs. Uh, and you can see on this one, there are one, two, three, four, five, six Leanne Lee fans. Uh, a seventh Leanne Lee fan. I've distinct, distinguished between them for a reason, I'll tell you in a minute. There's LEDs on the RAM. There's motherboard LEDs as well. Uh, and there's a graphics card, which is basically uh, a rainbow unicorn explosion. And there's LEDs on the cooler fans as well. Now they are green, and we'll just look at why that is now. Uh, I'm using NZXT Cam to control the pump and the fans for the cooler. Um, it, just to make life easier, because um, that's not a bad idea, the actual um, RGB fans for that are controlled by the cam software. So I've got it triggered based on CPU temperature. So at the moment it's green, obviously, and it stays green most of the time, to be fair. Um, for the other fans, they're all Lian Li. Um, I'm using L Connect 3. L Connect 3 is installed. Um, it's quite handy as well because it's got the pump profile as well. So you can use that to um, adjust the speed of them to mainly reduce noise but uh you can tweak the speed see that mb syncing is switched on that's really nice so basically that allows the motherboard to control the rgb on the fans super duper um and that is all being taken care of by open rgb with the effects plugin installed I'll look at that in a bit more detail in a minute, but we'll go back to the main machine over here and we'll have a look at how it's all plumbed in. Now, if I shine my torch there, you'll see there is a cable right in the center of the screen. That cable is the ARGB cable, the five volt one that's going through the back and into the cavity at the back, which we'll look at in a minute. The actual cable that's installed is this one. It's the Cooler Master addressable RGB because I found I needed a splitter to get everything connected up so I bought that and while we're here we might as well talk about the rest of the things um, that's the standard Lian Li uh, SL Inf 120 fan so it's the SL Infinity RGB fan very nice fan they're available as a kit with a controller and everything in one box but if you want to put them at the side and at the bottom they look, like other fans do, absolutely shocking. <sighs> because you can see the back of them. So, these ones here are not those fans. These fans are actually sucking air in, not blowing it out, because, drum roll please, they are reverse blade. And I blooming love these. So these are the same fan, except the, bla yeah, the blades are reversed. So they actually are sucking air in, in case you were triggered when you first saw the video and thought, oh, he's got those fans the wrong way around. They're not the wrong way around. They are reverse blade. So one, two, three, four, five, six are all reverse blade. That one is the standard one because that's pulling air out. So these are amazing, except at the time I made this video, very annoyingly, Lian Li don't sell these as a pack. So you can't buy a pack because you can get a pack of the SL Infinity with a controller, but these are not available as a pack. Ah! So you have to buy that, which is the Unifan SL Inf L Connect 3 controller kit. And that's the model for it. Um, I'll open it up and we can see what's inside it. The answer is um, a few cables that are left over and you get that just as accessory on it. <laughs> not at all helpful. So you need, the need to buy the separate controller. And that cable there goes through the back to where everything's plumbed in. And we'll look at that now. So we're around the back now. That cable from the ARGB header runs through the back to this massive cavity that the 111D's got, which is very handy for stuffing all this in. Uh, and it splits into five. The two of them that are not in use I've got hold of, so they don't get in the way. One of them is for the graphics card that has its own little cable that does ARGB. Um, the next one is this slightly thicker one. I'll just move that out of the way. That slightly thicker one. That, as you can follow it down, goes through a little, you can't really see it, but there's a circuit board at the bottom of the case that that's linked to, because that's for the strip that runs up the height of the, of the front, 
The front panel's got its own LED strip. You can control it using buttons on the front, but you, you press and hold the M1 and then it gives up control and relinquishes it to the, the, you know, the motherboard. So that's kind of cool that it does that. The other one is this little spindly one here, which you've got to be very careful with. That one goes to the Lian Li controller, the SL Infinity Unifan controller there. So these bigger connectors here, these are the fan blocks. So that's three, three, and that's the that's the back one. You can see it's going up there, look, to the back fan. So they're individually configurable. The actual um, box isn't doing RGB, remember, because that's been relinquished control. The, the, the switch has been slid. So this other little tiny wire that's coming off, that one goes through a fan header on the motherboard. So the Lianli software can measure and detect the fan speed and then you know you, the profiles can be activated so that's that's kind of an all-in-one situation where one piece of software open rgb handles the actual pretty colors but you've still got control of the fans and they can still react and i wouldn't worry too much about heat what really we're talking about here is noise because if you've got like six fans seven fans eight, nine, ten fans all whizzing away. That's going to be a bit annoying, like having a fly in your ear. So you don't, you're not necessarily going to use this controller to speed them up and slow them down according to temperatures, although obviously you can. The main thing you're going to do is use the controlling software. And this applies to the NZXT cam as well for the, the, the pump and the, you know, the, the coolant. That is about the noise these fans are making so that when you're gaming, there's suddenly a spike in activity and suddenly the fans kick in. And woo, that's that's quite annoying. So the reason you use the software is to mainly control the fan speeds for noise levels and that balance between noise and cooling. So I hope that sort of clarified it a little bit. Um, I'll put it all back together again and then we'll have another look at the software and then we'll just finish off. Oh, yeah, before I close it up, I'd just like to mention this little device here. You can see there's one cable going in, two going out. That's because the 111DXL has got one, two, three, four USB 3 connectors. <laughs> and most motherboards only have one USB 3 port on them. So that's, that's a bit annoying if you think about it. Um, so that means that all the USB ports on this case actually work. Um, so that's what that is in case you were wondering. So let's have a look at the software then. Remember NZXT cam, that's handling the LEDs and the cooling on the cooler and the little screen, look in the screen. Uh, Alconnect 3, that handles the speed of all the other fans, except it doesn't do the LEDs on them. It can do, that's switched to motherboard syncing. And um, motherboard syncing is handled by OpenRGB. So I'm gonna bring our OpenRGB up and make it nice and big and we'll have a good look at that. Now, when you get OpenRGB, it hasn't got an installer. It unpacks into a folder that you, when you unzip it, it's in a folder. I, I move that folder to the root of the C drive and then um, I run it from there. I made a little shortcut and put that on my desktop just in case I need access to it. Uh, and then I right clicked on the executable and said run as administrator. That is extremely important. You have to do that with OpenRGB the first time you run it. Because what that does is it gives it permission to go sniffing around looking for devices. If you don't do that, it probably won't find everything. So right click, run as administrator. Um, and in this particular case, when it did it, it detected the RGB Lian Li fans, but it didn't know who, what they were and how many LEDs they had. So if you go onto the Open RGB website, there is a page about compatibility and um, different sort of LED settings, the number of LEDs you're meant to enter. Uh, before you buy anything, it's a good idea to check that the fans you're using are on that list just to make life easier. Now, these ones are, these Lian Li ones are. And they've got, according to Open RGB, they've got 16 LEDs per fan. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's seven fans. So 16 times seven is whatever it is. I can't do that in my head. But that's the number you enter 
when it says, I found this, but I don't know how many LEDs are on it. Can you help me? And then it works. It's worth having a little play with that. I'm not going to set it all up again and show you how to do it. I'm just saying that's what happens. So the first time you run open RGB, run it as administrator, it will find everything, but it won't know quite how many LEDs to configure for the, the NLE fans. Enter 16 per fan and then it's fine. It works great. Uh, what I've also got, I'm going to go to um, settings. I'm going to go to plugins on OpenRGB. I've also got the OpenRGB effects plugin installed. Now, at the time this video was made, there is another one for regions, um, which is kind of cool. And when you think about that, you probably think about um, signal RGB, because that's what signal does. It has this very, very cool region map and you can lay out the bits that you've got and it uses that to synchronize things. Very cool. Unfortunately, when I use Signal, um, it didn't detect all the fans and it only lit up two of the three in each of the two, three blocks. So that wasn't great. That's why I'm using OpenRGB. Um, so I've got the OpenRGB effects plugin installed and we'll look at that in a second. I'm going to go to general settings and you can see I've got load profile ticked. I've got minimize on close. Uh, run zone checks on rescan ticked because when you do rescan at the bottom that's where it finds new stuff uh, mine's an AMD motherboard so I've got AMD SM bus ticked start at login start minimize so when it loads when it kicks in it loads open RGB loads the color cycling profile or whatever profile you save and then it carries on so once you've configured it you haven't got to worry about it, it you know it automatically does it so with the effects plugin, I've got Spectrum Cycling. I've got that ticked with all devices selected. Um, and that the actual pattern is saved. You can save that pattern and the effect profile is saved. And you can see I've got it as cycling. And so you, you configure it, you save it, and then you tell OpenRGB to load it. You can see there, load profile there save profile there so you, and you tell it to load it and that way every time the computer boots it configures it dink and everything works beautifully so let's have a look at the effects plugins and see how we see how it works so i've got effects here i'm going to just going to scroll down um there's hypno i'm going to go to hypno toad because it's because <laughs> it's like mad so there's hypno toad and you can see it appears there i'm going to enable it and then i'm going to click all the devices and then you see uh, it just goes berserk, doesn't it? Um, and you can see how, how kind of laid out, how things are all set up. Uh, I'll get rid of Hit No Toad and then I'll try a different one. Uh, the Rainbow one's probably the best one. So I'll do Rainbow Wave. I'll enable it and then I'll select all the devices and you can see there's Rainbow Wave. Now, by default, when it loads, before it's, you know, gets its predefined profile loaded what it'll do is it will do that anyway so you'll get this sort of splattery rainbow effect and then it will sort of kick in after it's booted open rgb loads loads the profile activates it away it goes but you can see all the fans and the front bar are all um are all set up and configured and then get rid of that i'm going to go back to spectrum cycling because i kind of like spectrum cycling so that's kind of a gentle thing. I don't think obviously you could then choose and in you know you are free to choose what you want. Some of the profiles work, some of them don't. Obviously, this isn't the end of the story. Open RGB is still developing. Um Signal's gone commercial a little bit. I don't care about that. If you want to pay the money, pay the money. Open RGB, thankfully, is completely free. So you have to accept that it's because it's free, you have to be involved a little bit with its configuration. It's not totally click and done i don't mind that um so yeah liking and subscribing is appreciated um if you've got any questions because you might have questions then um, stick them in the comments i try and answer all the comments um because i do uh and um thanks for watching